Hi there VC, it's Steve Whitty here. Um, Saturday morning and with another bit, uh, vinyl haul video. Um, she probably, if you watched my VCLT um, video, I had the day off on Thursday and I said I was going to go out again. And I did. Um, primarily just to... I've done, all my, I've done all my Christmas shopping, um, so I thought I'd just uh, have a walk around, just have a treat to me, treat myself, and look at some, go into some of the charity shops I don't really get, normally get a chance to go to go into. So I started off, and I went into the Salvation Army shop. Um, and to be honest, the charity shops are normally slim pickings round round here, um, primarily because the record shop I go to, he buys collections and. The stuff he doesn't want, he'll t he's honest and Pete's honest enough to say, oh, "I ain't going to sell that." And they don't end up in your charity shops; they'll just get slung. Um, so you do occasionally get, you know, the couple of, of uh, things to find. So as I said, I went in the Salvation Army shop first, and I come across two albums. First one, um, a double album, Lou Rawls Live, um, recorded. Um, and this come out, I believe it's 1978. I think it belonged to Pat, Pat Dunn, as it she wrote on, uh, he or she wrote on the back, there's Lou live. And I know Lou Rawls, and I, he's got a great great voice, and I've seen him mentioned a couple of times on, on the VC. Um, and I know him from the song, You'll Never Find Another Love Like Mine, and say, oh, it, it actually concert opens with that, and it's, it sort of closes with that as well, so it's his opening. So it's very much his big hit. Um, the album itself, double album, is in great condition. It's on the Philadelphia International label. Um, I haven't played it yet. I probably won't be playing it today. Uh, get busy, busy calendar. Um, but I'm looking forward to playing it over the probably tomorrow, the weekend. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Next album I found, um, a few weeks back, I showed a CD of Ella Fitzgerald Sings Cole Porter Songbook, Volumes 1 and 2. I have lucky in the Salvation Army had this, this is Volume 1. This came, um, I don't think this is an original, this is a, a reissue. Um, it's it's the Her Majesty's Voice Verve series, so it looks like it was a licensing deal that Verve did in the UK with Her Majesty's Voice. Um, just one of the great, one of the great voices. Again, beautiful um, Her Master's Voice label there with, with Nipper. Um, yeah, I'm just really stoked to have this. I've got an Ella Fitzgerald box set, um, so to have to find this album um, in the wild, and, and they obviously one of the great voices of the 20th century, so, so I'm really pleased to find this. Um, next shop door is the site of Children's Shop, and they don't normally have records, but I'd sometimes go in there just to see whatever bit of brick or brack or whatever I could I'd find for myself. And, and they had some. But it was not normal fare. But it did have a couple of albums which lost their covers. And um, one sp sparked my attention. It's Jose Feliciano's Feliciano at LP. This came out in 1968, and it's probably his well-known, well-known track. Well, is his version of "Light My Fire," which was a hit single for him. I know a big hit single in America, and it was a hit over here, minor hit. On this album, you've got California Dreaming, Don't Let the Sun Catch a Crime in My Life, and I Love Her, um, Nana Nana, Nina Nana, There's Always Something There to Remind Me, Just a Little Bit of Rain, Sunny, Here, There and Everywhere, and The Last Thing on My Mind. So, for me, it's very, very, very essentially covers. Um, so, I bought, it cost me a pound, it's, it's a curiosity. Vinyl's in pretty decent nick you know the fact he hasn't got a cover yeah it's not the end of the world I and mean, if i do find a beat up copy in a cover i'll buy that and just transfer it across but uh, yeah very pleased to find this um jose feliciano has just recently um released an album 
um, with Jules Holland. Um, so I might I might download uh, download that another strip or stream it just to see what that's like. So after that, I took took my way then to my local record store, a Cyclotron Records, and. Pete was doing there. Uh, he's extended his shop a little bit. He's had to move all his pound records out the the alley, the gangway. It, it, it was creating a blockage, so he's rented half another half of the unit where he's going to stick the pound stuff and the sing, pound singles there, so Pete can browse through and bring it in. Um, so I have started looking off initially. I started looking at singles. He looked like he got some half decent singles, particularly in the rock vein. Um, so I picked up Def Leppard's Hello America, single that came out in 1979, very much a statement of intent now, uh, like, uh, Def Leppard was always that ambitious to break America. Rush Subdivisions, I remember when I first heard this, when I brought the signals, and I brought it on tape at the time, the, the album, and hearing that opening um, keyboard, and I thought, oh, it might be a bit of a change, and it did mark a change in Rush. The keyboard suddenly took over. As again, it was a it was a minor hit single for them in the UK. I then picked up two singles from Saxon. I used to have this as it were as a kid. Uh, it's Wheels of Steel, and then the follow up single, Seven Four Seven Strangers in the Night. Uh, both were top twenty singles for the, for the band. Um, we are coming up to Christmas, and it isn't Christmas until Noddy says so. Noddy Older says so. So it's not uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's a um, 1981 reissue. Um, it's, signal, it, it's a Christmas single in the UK. It's a regular staple. Um, came out originally came out in 1973. Bit of a rarer one, it's on the red injection Polydor label. Apparently, it was this edition was mostly on the silver one. Um, 1973, Britain was a bit of a, a bit of a slum hole, so this single just represents just having a good time, and that's probably why it's my favourite Christmas single of all time. Going on to the albums, in the pound bin, I found this this is Elton John's 171170 a live album this was originally uh, issued on the DJM level this is a Pickwick Hallmark reissue this album got reissued so it's the same tracks it's just got a different cover it was a cheaper reissue as a lot of albums of that period were in the 70s went on the fame label music for pleasure so I was pleased to have that that fills a gap in my Elton John collection as I showed on my VCLT video, that James Griffith sent me a Randy Newman album, which was the first album I'd ever received, ever owned of his. And like Buses, another one comes along. This is Good Old Boys. This is on the reprise label. This came out in 1974. Let me show you that. There you go. Reprise. Now, probably best known track on here is Redneck, the one I'm aware of. Um, so again, as I've never, and there's got the track called Birmingham, which I think is about Birmingham, Alabama, not Birmingham, uh, <laughs> not Birmingham in the UK, not from where I'm from. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I enjoyed listening to to the to the album I received from James, so I'm looking forward to listening to this. And also in the pound bins, I found this. This is Carly Simon's No Secrets. So probably a breakthrough album. It's a it's a reissue on Electric. It's on the Red label. Um, and probably obviously it's got Your So Vain on it. Um, and. And again, I'm probably apart from my greatest hits, I'm not really totally fully aware of Carly Simon, so I'm pleased to find this and I'm quite happy and looking forward to giving that a spin. While I was in the shop, a guy comes in with about five bags of records, he's having a he's having a clear out, and and it, it paid, paid 
gave him the money, took him off his hands. You know, he obviously saw some good stuff to to have he, when he went fun for him. He said, well, I kind of fun for him, says, there's any kink in the pound range? And he says, yeah, yeah, have a, have, no problem, have a look. And, and two things caught my eye. Again, two records that did, lost their covers. Um, and Dude 1973, uh, I think, or was it 1983? Um, commented that you know when I bought the Mountain album that you know you know, you, you know good year to take the take the chance on on the album, um, and you know, you know Chris commented on that and I thought you know it's you don't play the cover play, it's the actual as long as the actual the actual vinyl is not okay Nick reasonably Nick you know, willing to take the chance so there was two that immediately stood out the first one and the guy used to own it quite happily put down. Name of it, it's the best of the doobies by the doobie brother. Um, I think this is a German uh pressing. I think the album came out in 1978, so you've got China, China Grove, Long Train Running, which and a remix was a hit single in about 1993. Um, Take Me to the Streets, Listen to the Music, Blackwater, Rocking Down the Highway. Um, he says it's just all right. It keeps you running. South Lady, Midnight Lady, take me in your arms without you. So, a good introduction to Doobie Bank Brothers. I haven't got any of their albums. I'm aware of the music. Probably got Greatest Hits CD, which came out when um, Long Train Running, the remix, was a, was a hit. The second album I found, and I've put on here, is The Best of Kansas. I don't think you could read that on any biro. There we go, let's get that. Yeah, it's Best of Kansas. This came out in 1984. Um, so I've got left um, the first debut album, left Hand Over Chore, or something like that. Don't, man can come up to me, not. But yeah, I was pleased to get that. And for a pair, again, if I find a beat up copy with a you know, half decent cover, I'll, I'll, I'll buy that and swap it round. And then there were a couple of albums that looked in well, looked weren't one pound albums, but uh, said, I want to show them. Said you can have them for a couple of quid each because the covers were a bit hanging off and whatever. So the first one was Deep Purple Stormbringer, um, album from nineteen seventy five. It's the last album to feature Richie Blackmore. Um, at this point, David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes had started, started to feel more confident within the band from the looks of things. And their influence of their R&B roots um, was starting to come for, and which I don't think Richie Blackmore was too keen on. He went off and did a solo album, which became Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. So pleased with that, he um, decided to quit the band. So there's that one. And then a few weeks ago, I showed Renegades, um, for by Finn Lizzie, Renegade by Finn Lizzie, which features Snowy White, and this Chinatown was the first album to feature him on guitar. Um, this little album was quite successful. It had two top tw uh, two top twenty singles, Chinatown and Killer on the on the Loose, and it sort of coincided with the um, um, with the new album Heavy Metal coming back into phase. So yeah, I was pleased to fit pick, pick that to find that. So yeah. Good album, adds more to my Finn Lizzy collection. So, so there you go, VC. That was my what I picked up on um, Thursday. If you liked what you've seen, you want and um, you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. 119 subscribers, big thank you to you all. Um, click um, like, uh, click the thumbs up, thumbs down. If you want to make a comment, feel free to click on that. Um, make a comment I'll always reply back to you so I'm going to go now because it's coming up to 15 minutes so until the next time VC enjoy your Saturday and enjoy your crate digging if you get chance and keep spinning take care of yourself and keep smiling